Hey everyone, it's Chris. Uh, welcome back. Uh, I've got another tutorial for you in our Mario clone tutorial series. This one is going to uh, allow the player to interact with the enemy. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with that. And uh, what we're going to do is get uh, our enemy class. And um, we're going to create some more variables for our enemy. Let's see here. So uh, the, the variables we're going to need are, we need to know if the enemy should die. Okay, so actually, yeah, let's make that a private boolean and should die. And we're going to set it equal to false because the enemy should, really shouldn't die right at the get-go. So false, should die. All right, um, and then we're going to need a, um, a float and we're going to call this one death timer because no one dies instantly. Um, <clears throat> at least uh, the decay process takes a while. So um, for our enemy, uh, once it's dead, we don't want it to disappear right away. Uh, we want to give it just a little bit of time uh, before it actually uh, you know, disappears off the screen. And um, that time is going to be defined in our inspector, uh, but we're going to give it a default value of one second. So we're going to call this time before destroy, meaning that it's going to uh, basically the game object is going to be destroyed from our scene. Um, we're going to set that to equal one second. And uh, to start using these, we're going to uh, create. <coughs> I'm going to create a public method. And we're going to call this uh, crush. And this method we're going to actually call from our uh, player class. And that is when the player detects that it has, um, instead of ground underneath it, it's going to, uh, if, it, if it detects that there's an enemy underneath it, it's going to call this method and uh, begin the crushing sequence. So it's public nut. Okay. Um, so what we do first here is when this is called, we're going to set our state equal to um, enemy state dot dead. And what this is going to do is it's going to stop everything in the update enemy position <coughs> loop. Um, then we are going to uh, get the animator component and we're going to set a bool. Um, and the bool is going to be is crushed, and we're going to set that to true to change our animation state from walking to crushed. And then we're also going to get our uh, collider component, collider 2D, and we're going to set its enabled property to false so that the uh, player will stop interacting with it. <clears throat> and we're going to set our should die boolean to uh, true. Okay. And that will trigger this next method that we're going to create. And actually this one we'll just make uh, private check crushed. Okay. And this we're going to go ahead and call from our update method. Every frame, we're going to check and see if we should crush. Um, now, to check that, we're going to say if should die, because we don't want it to get crushed if it shouldn't die. So we check if should die is true. If should die is true, then um, we're going to check our death timer. And if our death timer is less than time before destroy, we are going to increment our death timer by time that uh, time that delta time. Okay. If it isn't less than or equal to uh, time before destroy, that means it has exceeded the amount of time that we've allowed for it to be alive before it is removed from the scene we're going to go ahead and destroy actually we're going to set uh, should die to false and then we're going to destroy 
this game object. All right. So our death timer, as you'll remember, is uh, set to zero by default. Uh, time before destroy is set to one second. Every time this method is called if should die is true, our death timer is incremented by time dot delta time, which is a fraction of a second every frame from how long it took to get from one frame to the next. Then, um, if this is finally like if our timer has exceeded our time before destroy, then uh, we jump into this else statement and uh, we set should die to false, and then uh, we call destroy and pass this game object here. So then this game object is removed. <clears throat> Okay, so nothing here is going to actually happen, okay, until the uh, the player class calls this uh, crush method. And that is what we're going to do right now. So we're going to jump into the player class. And um, in the... Uh, In the player class, uh, we're going to scroll down into our check floor raise. And um, right here, if we're getting back a, a hit ray, um, a, a hit 2D object, then uh, we know that the player is colliding with the ground or anything else that's underneath him, um, such as the enemy, because uh, we also need to, then in Unity, um, add the enemy to the uh, floor mask in the, uh, in the player. Uh, class. So let's go ahead and first, what we'll do is we'll check if the um, hitray.collider.tag is equal to the enemy. Remember when we set that just uh, in the uh, last tutorial, I believe we did, uh, we set the enemy tag to be equal to enemy. Okay. So if hitray.collider.tag equals enemy, um, we are going to hitray <coughs> collider get component enemy AI, we're going to call the crush script, or the crush method in the enemy AI script, okay? And that's going to start uh, the enemy's death. All right, so now in order for us to collide with the enemy, we have to go into Unity, in the inspector, I'm gonna select the select the, uh, the player, and we're going to add, into our floor mask, we're going to add the enemy layer, okay? So we've got the default, which are all the platforms, and then we've got the enemy layer that we're going to collide with the top of the enemy. So now, uh, we should be able to click play. And if we jump on top of the enemy, it should die. And he does. Okay, so uh, one thing you may have noticed, or may have not, um, let's uh, do this again, is that uh, when you're playing the original Mario, um, when you're landing on the enemy's head, uh, there's a little bounce that Mario does. Uh, it's pretty, I mean, it's, it's not like a, a big deal, but uh, it does add to the gameplay, I think, to the uh, the way the game actually looks, and, and it adds a little something. Um, so, right now what's happening is when Mario jumps on the enemy's head, uh, you'll see him land and then immediately fall after the enemy disappears. So it kind of gives... Uh, kind of gives it a look of maybe he might be bouncing a little bit, but uh, it's, I don't think it's enough bounce. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a method that will um, add a bounce to our player from our uh, from when he hits the, the top of the enemy. So what we'll do here is in the, uh, in the player class, let's go ahead and open that back up. We are going to add variable here at the top of our class and um, let's see we'll call it uh, let's add it right here <clears throat> yeah, so boolean and we're going to call it bounce and we're going to set it to false okay and then we're going to add another state here call it bouncing And finally, we are going to add another variable, public float, uh, bounce, velocity. We're going to make it public so that we can manipulate this in the inspector until we um, like how it looks. So, 
what we should do here is um, we should go ahead and uh, add an if check to our yeah, to our update player position. Um, maybe here after we're checking if the player state is jumping. Uh, let's check if the player state equals player state dot bouncing. And if it does, <clears throat> then we're going to change. Or we actually need to first check to make sure that it doesn't equal bouncing and that we want to bounce. So if bounce equals true and the current state doesn't equal bouncing, then we set the current state equal to player state dot bouncing and we set our velocity to new vector two to the velocity x value and we're passing the bounce velocity as the y value <clears throat> and then we check if our player state is equal to player state bouncing Okay, and if it is, we're going to do sort of something like we do in the jump, and we're going to set our y position, and to increment that by our y velocity, and we're going to multiply that by time dot delta time, and then we're going to set our velocity y value decremented by the gravity times time dot delta time. All right, so basically the same thing. Um, and then uh, to basically get this whole bouncing thing started, um, all we have to do is in that same method where we're checking if uh, the uh, enemy collided with the uh, or sorry, with if the, where the player collided with the enemy, which was in the uh, check floor raise, right, right here. All we have to do is say, okay, bounce equals true, right? And um, then in our fall method, we'll also have to specify that uh, bounce equals false. If we're falling, you're not bouncing. All right, that should be it for uh, for code-wise. Um, we do have to make one small change in Unity, and that is in the inspector for our player. Um, we need to actually give it a bounce velocity, and um, let's go ahead and give it 10 for the bounce velocity. It's about half of the uh, the jump velocity, so maybe that may be too much, but we'll, we'll try it and see what it looks like. Let's click play, and let's wait for our enemy, and jump, and there we go, there's our bounce. That looked pretty good, I think, I don't think we need to do anything else to it. Looks good to me. Alright, so now we've got our player able to kill our enemy, our enemy able to kill our player, okay I think I'm gonna stop it here and um, when we're gonna pick up with our, our next tutorial uh, we're gonna go ahead and add in the, uh, the script for the castle and uh, basically what that's going to do is it's going to trigger our win scene if the player reaches the castle door so um, stay tuned and I'll see you guys soon.